Welcome back everyone to the code long series on creating a chat application. In the previous video, we added a form to our registration page using WT Forms module and Flask's WT Forms extension. In this video, we will see how we can simplify the code we wrote using Flask WT Form extension so that it ends up looking neater like this. We will use macros for this. So let's start coding. If you look at this code, you would see that the code to render each field is about 90% common for all the three fields. If you really look at it, there are only three points of difference. First is the name of the field, username, password, and confirm password. The second point of difference is that the placeholder we are using is different for all the three fields. So that accounts for about 90% of the difference between these three fields. And the last point of difference is that just for the username field, there are these additional attributes, which the password and the confirmation password fields don't have. So aside from this, the code for all the three fields is identical, including the ones that you see for the error message, where again, it's only the name of the field, which is changing in all the three instances. So wouldn't it be great if you could write a piece of code which could generate this entire set of code without us having to copy paste it thrice? Well, that's exactly what macros do. So we'll put our macro in a different file so that it's easier to manage. Let's create a new file. We will create the new file inside the templates folder. And let's call this file form helper. To create the macro, the syntax is macro and then the name of the macro. Let's call it display field. So think of what this is. This looks like some sort of a function and we expect it to generate the code that we saw in index.html file. What would be the parameters that we need to pass to this? We would idly pass in the field name itself. So in our example, this would be username, password, and confirmation password. Now, aside from the name of the field, the other value which was different was the placeholder. So that's also a parameter that we need to pass in. Let's copy the code from the previous page. So I'll just copy the one for username and paste it. So we'll modify it by replacing the username with field name and value of placeholder attribute to placeholder value. We can't leave autocomplete and autofocus like this because these two attributes are not required for password field or the password confirmation field. The way to solve it is to replace these two attributes with quarks. If you've gone through any Python documentation, you would have encountered this. It just means that you can pass in as many keyword arguments as you want. This will be clear once you see how it works. Let's look at the way the error messages are rendered. Okay, so here again, we will replace the name of the field with field name. We close the macro by typing end macro. Let's save this file and go back to index.html. First, let's import the macro from form helper file. And from the file, we will import display field. Okay, so let's go use this. Let's add it before the button. So the syntax is the name of the macro, which is display field. And next, we pass in the name of the field. So we are working with the username. So the name of the field is form.username. Then the placeholder value. The value of this field was username. And since we have used quarks to state that we would be passing on as many keyword arguments as we want, we pass in the remaining field attributes for autocomplete and autofocus like this. Password field is easier to render than username since there are no special keyword arguments for it. So let's just copy what we wrote for username and use it for the password field. I'll change the name of the field, the placeholder value, and we don't need these additional attributes. Confirmation password is uh, identical. We'll change the name of the field. And we just need to make sure we are passing in the right placeholder value. So let me just copy it from here and paste it here. With this, we can delete all this code. Let's go check whether this form still works as it should. So we'll go to the terminal. I'm inside the folder that we are using for this project. 
and have activated the virtual environment that we had set up for this. So let me start the application. I'm going to copy this and paste it here. So we can see the forms. Let's see if the error messages work. One of the validation rules was that username and password had to be minimum four characters. Let me put a three character username and password. And I will put a different confirmation password so we can see all the three error messages. So the error messages are appearing as it should. Let's look at a happy flow. Okay, so the form is working exactly as we expected it to. We have taken the long chunk of code we wrote last time and we have turned it into something which is easier to read and much easier to troubleshoot. So let's commit the changes that we have done. I'm going to stop the server. Okay, so we modified the index.html file and we need to add the form helper file that we created. So in this video, we saw a basic use of macros to render a field. In the next video, we will start working on connecting our form to a database. We'll be using Postgres SQL database and SQL alchemy. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.